Worker burnout was a thing well before the pandemic, but my next guest says COVID-19 has left us on the brink of a major mental health crisis in the workplace. Joining me now is Ariana Huffington, founder and CEO of Thrive Global. Ariana, always a pleasure to see you. Um, so tell me some of the effects you think this pandemic has already had, perhaps long lasting, on the U.S. workforce. Well, as you know, Alexis, and great to see you again, uh, burnout and um, a skyrocketing increase in chronic diseases were problems even before the pandemic, as was the mental health crisis. And now, months into the pandemic, with a dark winter ahead of us, uh, we are seeing the evidence of an increase in depression, anxiety, and worker burnout everywhere, both among those of us who have the luxury of being able to work from home and the frontline workers. We are working, for example, with Walmart and their store associates, and we're seeing such a hunger for the tools that we can bring them to start making better choices every day, even if it is small incremental better choices around sleep, around uh, a movement, around food, around gratitude, and how these affect our overall physical immunity, mental health, and prevent burnout. Well, tell me, Anna, you always bring with you some great tips on how we can help our overall well-being. But when you look at corporate America, when you're talking to uh, large employers, small employers, what are some things they can start doing right now to help improve the well-being of their workforce, especially when they look out post this pandemic? Exactly. Well, what is amazing, Alexis, is that for the first time, we are seeing an unprecedented interest from the C-suite in these issues. It's not just a matter for HR professionals. It's not just about nice to have um, tools and offerings for their employee base. The recognition is now clear that the well-being and mental resilience of your employees is going to be crucial to productivity and the bottom line. So as a result, we are seeing more and more leaders giving cultural permission themselves to their employees, which is key, because we are living in a culture which has kind of glamorized burnout. You know, Alexis, the idea that we can power through exhaustion and keep going. And now we are seeing, for example, uh, look at Julie Sweet, the CEO of Accenture. She did a video that introduced our Thrive Mental Health Program to all the 500,000 employees in eight languages. But the fact that it was introduced with a video from the CEO is key because employees need to feel that cultural permission before they begin to take steps. Um, that are based on the clear scientific premise that well-being and productivity are aligned. You know, Ariana, what role, if any, do you think the government should play in all of this? Is there something that you'd like to see the incoming Biden administration do to help give workers and, and employers the tools they need? I think there is an enormous amount that government can do by prioritizing prevention. So much of our healthcare system is not really a healthcare system, it's a disease care system. And only 3% of the astronomical amounts we spend on healthcare, which grow every year, goes to prevention. So turning that around and creating a healthcare system that is uh, proactive rather than reactive, where people recognize that behavior trumps genes. If we change our own behavior around sleep, around food, around movement, around our mental habits, we can really um, change our fate when it comes to our medical fate. And yet, even though this is absolutely proven by all science, it is not the way we conduct 
uh, our um, access to health care. And if the government, the incoming government can change that, it would be the only thing, frankly, that can prevent us from this uh, huge crisis we have ahead of us, both when it comes to mental health and skyrocketing increases in chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, etc. I'd love to get your thoughts, Ariana, on, on the vaccine that came now to this country in record time yesterday. Um, you are the founder and CEO of Thrive Global. You founded Huffington Post. You've sat on a number of corporate boards throughout your career. A number of those corporate boards will now have to think about whether or not to mandate that their workers receive the vaccine. I know last week Facebook came out and said, for the time being, we're not going to mandate that. What would you advise companies as they as they, you know, struggle with with what to do with the vaccine? Um, so we're not at that stage yet, Alexis. You know, we still have um, um, to deal with the scarcity of the vaccine. We don't have enough um, vaccines at the moment for everybody in the country. Um, I want us to focus on how hopeful it is to see people so quickly after the FDA approval was granted being vaccinated all around the country and how important it was that we prioritize frontline healthcare workers uh, who have been literally the heroes of, of this pandemic. So as we are getting um, results, um, as we are seeing um, the side effects that people are concerned about not being hopefully um, that significant, I think we are already seeing an increase in people's willingness to be vaccinated. Uh, and so I, I, I'm hopeful that people will be voluntarily vaccinated without having to mandate it. And as you look ahead to 2021, do you have any New Year's resolutions you could share with us and maybe inspire us, Ariana? Yes, Alexis, you know, I wrote a piece about uh, resilience being my um, word of 2020 and 2021. And for me, the most hopeful thing I can say is, can we use this crisis as a catalyst to change a lot of things that frankly should have been changed pre-pandemic, especially around healthcare, especially around glamorizing burnout, because the way we're working and living was no longer sustainable. And Alexis, when it comes to new year resolutions, I don't believe in them. I believe in micro steps. That's how we call them at Thrive, daily incremental, better choices around what we eat, how much we move, how much we sleep and the thoughts we hold in our head. Unfortunately, New Year resolutions are often abandoned by week three in January and people have a harder time getting back on the horse. So let's make them small incremental changes. We have hundreds of them on Thrive Global you can pick from and that way we can make them sustainable. Baby steps, they lead to big change. Ariana Huffington, CEO and founder of Thrive Global. Thanks so much and happy holidays to you. Happy holidays. Thank you so much, Alexis.